you are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheindlin. Are you an idiot or are you just not paying attention? Stop. Just answer my question. Let me explain mm -hmm. something to you, Mr. Glenn. I don't like you. No! Most of it! She's the tough-as-nails terror of daytime TV. You lie to me, I'll wipe up the floor with you worse than anybody else who's ever tackled you. Shh. Listen to me. No. I'm older, smarter. If you live to be 120, you're not going to be as smart as I am in one finger. And if Judge Judy is talking, I I try, I'm speaking. When I'm speaking, you don't. You better pay attention. Quiet! Look into my eyes. Don't talk when I'm talking. Just shape up. You're like a drill sergeant. They don't keep me in this job, Mr. Soros, because I'm young and lithe and beautiful. I think I'm a good fact finder. They keep me in this job because I'm smart. And if you should have brought that piece of evidence, you didn't, that is not my fault. And if you're 22 years old, and if I say to you, on what day were you arrested, and you say to me which time, that is not a good thing. Unless he's in a hospital, he's to be in school. Clear, sir? This is not a legal game, counselor. And this Judith Scheindlin does not memory, just play a tough judge questions. on TV. Well, what do you want me to give him, a testimonial dinner? That's she right. was a tough judge for 14 to years on New York's That's family right. court. She is a five foot two package of attitude with a capital A. Where Morley and Safer and 60 Minutes found her in 1993. Objections? Forget it. Sit down. I was standing Sit down. down. You no one in her courtroom objection. got away with anything, which didn't make her too popular in some quarters. Because I have 30 other cases to do, and you can come in and put any ground that you want on the record. Yes, Your Honor. Good. Miss Levy had only one more thing to say. Just read her lips. If you missed it, it rhymes with which. You were no nonsense. Not afraid to speak out, not to challenge the system the way things had always been done. I didn't come as a fresh kid to the family court. I came pra having practiced there for 10 years. I knew where people were sleeping in the hallways, you know, instead of doing their job. I knew what systems weren't working. I knew how things were getting padded. So I was dangerous. She was a Brooklyn girl who went to law school but stopped practicing to stay home with the kids for a while. I was going a little crazy. It wasn't satisfying enough. Kids would go away to school for two, three hours, and what was I was watching soap operas. I said, this is not what I studied for seven years for. Something has to happen in my life before the children go to college. So you had a friend who said, ah, I have just the right job for you. Come and work in For me, the, in family court. In family court as a prosecutor. Correct. Her job, she says, was one thing that led to the breakup of her first marriage. A few years later, she went to meet some friends for a drink and spotted Jerry Scheindlin. And I looked at him and I thought he was adorable. <laughs> I still think he's adorable. So what'd you think when she walked up? I said to myself, now that is one pretty lady. <laughs> and she kept on getting closer and closer. <laughs> <laughs> They were married and raised her two and his three children together. They now have 11 grandchildren. Eventually, both Scheinlins became judges. She in family court, he in criminal court. What was it like being married judges? Frankly, that sounds like a TV program. It was terrific. I just wish that my objections were sustained more often. <laughs> Very you good, dear. Rather than overrule. That was a good uh, one. Was a good that was one in uh, a row. That <laughs> one in a row. <laughs> to look at them now, you'd never know that they divorced in 1990. Of course, they remarried a year later. It was one of those divorces that just didn't, didn't work out. It just didn't. It just didn't take. It just didn't take. Fortunately, it just didn't take because I think that we are a much better couple than we would be independently. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judith Scheinlin. And when Judy got the opportunity to shoot a TV pilot, Order, all rise. Jerry was all for it. She's got it. She's different. She has a tremendous sense of humor. She's very smart. Hey, hey, am I That's doing all right? Am I doing okay? <laughs> that is the dumbest thing I ever heard. You got a butt out. When the program started, the producers made the mistake of thinking they were in charge. I said to one of them, I said, I have food in my refrigerator older than you are. 
and you're telling me how to be a successful person? <laughs> First, get yourself successful, then tell me how to, how to hold myself, what to wear, what, what to do in order to sell my product, because so far I've done pretty well. Very well. This is not a democracy here. Yeah, she wanted It's a monarchy. <laughs> Judge Judy is now the number one syndicated show on television, even beating Oprah in her last two seasons. You don't have to be mean to me, Anna. Listen to me. I can be any way that I want to be when somebody's trying to pull the wool over my eyes. Get a job. If you're wondering, the cases on Judge Judy are real cold from court dockets around the country. You can't sell your dogs in good conscience to the unsuspecting Both public. sides must to agree to it. abide by whatever the judge dog. rules. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000, that's yeah. all. Thank you. But it's the show that pays the damages, not the bickering parties. Still, the judge insists the stakes are high because people want to air their grievances. Most of these people are involved in the emotion of the relationship that caused them to come here in the first place. So they both, they want vindication. They want to, yeah, they want vindication. Revenge. <laughs> Sometimes revenge. I'm Judge Judy and I'm tough. She's judicious. Judge Judy is famous enough to be parodied on Saturday Night Live. Hey, 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 look at me, look at me. I'll take a pig to the butcher when I want to eat bologna. Got it? <laughs> and secure enough to join in the fun. Get your bony ass out of that chair, you wuss. And it's been more than just fun. But I'm ready to rule. It's reported that you now make $45 million a year. That's a lot of money. $45 million a year is a lot of money. So I guess wow is the right thing to say. <laughs> this is a wow. Isn't it pretty? Enough for this 13-acre spread in suburban Connecticut. So I guess this would be the kitchen. Yeah, great kitchen. That's a professional type stove. How much do you actually cook? I don't know actually how to turn on that stove. <laughs> she doesn't have to cook anymore. She can enjoy her elegant living room and huge family room, a far cry from the old days. You said at one point you and Jerry, when you were both judges, you were living in a one-bedroom apartment? No, we were living in a studio apartment at 11 Fifth Avenue with a Murphy bed. <laughs> Please welcome the woman known as Judge Judy. Judge Judy. Now she happily admits she has a fantasy life, able to invite her grandsons as she throws out the first ball at a Dodgers game. This is Judge Judy. Do your math. And she says she plans to do the show until at least 2015. Judgment for the place for the amount of $1,300. Thank you Thank very you, much. Your Honor. Go back to Louisiana and be happy. All these excuses you may step out. Following the advice she gives every day on television. I say it in lots of different ways, but the message is it's your life, live it well.